Hi, I'm Andrew Smith, and I'm the saxophone tutor at the Conservatorium of Music High School. Today, we'll be looking at the basics of putting the saxophone together and forming a fundamental embouchure to help make a wonderful saxophone sound. So when we look at the saxophone, there are a few basic parts we work with. We have the body, the neck, a mouthpiece, a ligature, and a reed. And there are lots of different ways we can put the saxophone together and some are better for the instrument and easier for you than others. What we look to do is line up the flat part of the mouthpiece, the table, with this line that's on the neck. If it's too much one way or the other, you have to twist your head and you don't want that. So lining up the flat part of the mouthpiece with that line there. This way, and this is very important, this is the part that most people get wrong, they try to put the neck on the saxophone first and that can damage the neck when you're putting on the mouthpiece and the reed. So now we'll get the reed. It's nice to moisten the reed in our mouth just before we apply it because the natural wood likes a little bit of moisture to help it vibrate. Then we obviously put the flat side of the reed on the flat part of the mouthpiece and we line it up nice and straight. And what we're aiming for is for the tiniest bit of black to be showing from the top when it's facing us but roughly the reed and the mouthpiece parallel at the top. If the reed's too far over, the student will find it too hard to blow. If it's too low, they'll get a, a crass, funky sound. So roughly parallel. Then you slide your ligature on top. This is a leather ligature, but some are metal, doesn't matter. They all do the really important job of holding the reed nicely on place in the mouthpiece and allowing it to vibrate. When we're doing up our ligature, we want it to have done up firmly but not too tight. Now before we add the now completed hard part to the body, it's always a good idea to put your neck strap on now. Then attach the neck and mouthpiece to the body of the instrument. And again, talking about lining up the flat, we have to twist the neck screw to make sure everything's tight. And like we did with the mouthpiece and the reed, it's important to try and line up the octave key with that line on the neck. That way the octave mechanism will work best. If it's too much either side again, our body will be in awkward positions. So roughly line them up straight there. And now the exciting part, making a sound. So I like to explain a saxophone embouchure as ooh, like you're whistling or saying ooh. And the reason we do this is it brings all the muscles into a beautiful point. So there's three basic areas we need to look at. Number one is our teeth, our top teeth, sit on top of the mouthpiece, just a little way on, maybe about a centimetre or so. Our bottom lip has to roll slightly over our teeth. We don't want it rolled too far out, and we don't want the lip over our teeth, yep. it's a tiny bit over our teeth, and that cushions the reed and allows it to vibrate. And then these muscles come in from the side. So if we do that ooh shape, we get that nice little cushion, teeth sitting on top, and the muscles coming in, and that allows us to have a nice embouchure. So if we blow, we just play a B, which is the top finger, we can make a nice full sound. Can you try that again for me? Nice full sound with that ooh shape. Now, besides saying ooh for our embouchure, we obviously need to breathe in before we blow. So I quite like the phrase RE2. R is the breath in, it's the inhalation, getting us nice and full. E is getting our body set. And two is the release, it's the tongue in, which we'll talk about in a second, which lets the air go through. So if we have, we get a nice clear start to the sound. Now with our embouchure in our air, we can create a lovely sound. The next kind of really challenging thing when we're first starting the saxophone is learning to tongue, which is the way we articulate on the instrument. Now, tonguing is best described with a little tongue twister. We use the tip of the tongue on the tip of the reed. So when we're playing, if that's the reed, the tip of our tongue sits right on the tip of the reed and it kind of acts like a dam and it holds back all the air. When the tongue goes through, uh, goes down, sorry, the air will then shoot through the instrument. 
So it's like I was saying before, that two sound. Two, the air goes through. Tongue goes down and the air goes through. Can you show a two on the B? And we tongue on saxophone for two basic reasons. Essentially, we can create, as we showed, sound without using the tongue, but it's not very clear, it kind of moves in. When we're playing with other people, we need our note to start straight away. So by using the tongue, two, we can get that really nice clean start. The other reason we use our tongue is for fast repetition. If we only use the air, it's about as rapidly as I can play, but if I use my tongue, we can get really rapid articulations. So that's that two. Tip of the tongue on the tip of the reed, it goes down, the air goes through, two of those beautiful clear sounds. Can we have G major all tongue? And it provides a beautiful clear start to each note, whereas we do it all slow with no tongue. A lovely smooth sound. So the two most important things when you're first starting are our embouchure, the way that's the funny word for how we put our mouth on the instrument. So that ooh shape, teeth on top of the mouthpiece, lip just over, muscles in to focus our airstream, and tonguing, articulating the note, is the two. Tip of the tongue on the tip of the reed, tongue goes down, and the air goes through. One more two on the G. 